I knew of other veterans who uh, were accessing services through the system. So we, we, are, we are very much aware. Actually, I, can, I, can, uh, I, I just saw on one of the screensavers from Northampton that mm -hmm. on June 21st, I believe, PFLAG is doing a presentation to the staff up at Northampton. Oh. And I think that, you know, that's a, that's a really good thing because in, as far as doing outreach and making sure that the providers are aware and offering effective services to all veterans right. mm -hmm. and, and, and veterans who belong to smaller populations, and sure. the LGBT community is, is one of those, right. um, there's an ongoing need for not only outreach but also for ongoing education and um, training of the staff. And so I'm very glad to see that that's happening. Yeah. Mm. Well, and, and kind of a, um, related to that, there was some good news recently that, that sort of bears on, on uh, Maria's job. Um, I believe it was the Secretary of Defense had signed some new, um, some new rules as to how don't ask, don't tell can be applied. And one of the things that, or t two of the important things that have been um, removed as criteria for somebody qualifying to be removed from the military for being gay, or lesbian, et cetera, um, is hearsay <laughs> Good. <laughs> and your medical records. Yes. So if it should come up in, in medical discussions that you are gay or lesbian or bisexual or transgender, um, those fall under a certain level of confidentiality. Those are not supposed to be allowed to be used to kick you out of the military. I know there have been a number of stories about that being a real concern in seeking medical, mm -hmm. any kind of medical help, is that um, you know, as, as, soon as, as soon as the government finds out, they're going to kick you out. Mm -hmm. and, and it's, it's reassuring to, to know that people are trying to you know, help vets get treatment and let it be treatment. Yes. <laughs> right. And not, no, you know, but. I don't know how that affects vets. You're not, right. You can be sort of kicked out and lose your, lose right. your veterans' benefits, or could have been kicked no. out and lose your veterans' benefits or whatnot. But. Yeah. It would depend on their discharge status. My, under, my experience is that if someone has been discharged because of their sexual orientation, they will receive an honorable discharge, mm -hmm. at which point they are eligible for the health care benefits to the extent that they're eligible and anything else. Sure. One of the things that makes Vet Center different from the medical center is that we can provide treatment based on eligibility of those three things those that I told you before. Criteria, deployment, right. right? Deployment, sexual trauma history, or bereavement without deference to discharge status. Gotcha. And I think that's really important because um, I've worked with many veterans who, after experiencing their traumatic event, whatever sure. it was, and especially if that's pancaked on top of other stressors, sure. okay, that they may act out, they may um, yep. behave in such a way that then falls within the regs for them to be discharged. Mm -hmm. and, and if they're, if with, the, um, with bad papers, they can't get VA medical, medical center benefits. treatment. Right. So by being able to come to the vet center, uh, we are able to, one, provide readjustment counseling treatment for them. We can work with them to whatever extent is possible to help them get to, connected to people who may assist them in, in the appeal process, mm -hmm. if at all possible. And there is the possibility of uh, filing a request with the health care administration for health care benefits only. Mm. So, for example, um, if, if someone was, was kicked out and clearly, clinically, I, I can look as a clinician and say, yeah, it's, it's likely, given their current diagnosis and given the behavior pattern right. that warranted them getting kicked out, it's likely that behavior is connected to the diagnosis and then we can work with them to see if a request can't be put in sure. so they can get treatment because, again, often the treatment involves medication and we can't provide that at the vet center. Right, right. Uh, well, that's, that's but they but they would likely in, in in this scenario would likely not have been discharged, not honorably, had um, due to a, due to the result of some you know injury, on the job. 
I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no. I was I was just following up on what you were saying that that um, if. If, if, they're, if, if they did get dishonorably discharged yes. because of a change in their behavior that wouldn't have otherwise happened had they Correct. not been injured Correct. in the military, Correct. they have a recourse. Yes, yes. They have an appeals process. Correct. And in, in cases where that has been, very sadly, harassment and assault because of their sexual orientation, mm. um, that, uh, that is something that we can, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And unfortunately, yep. that, uh, that does happen. <laughs> wow. Well, it's wonderful that you're able to address some of this. Um, I, I guess one of the questions I had, and this is, again, going to be a multi-part now, I think. <laughs> um, you, you talk about um, assault, and certainly, you know, I don't know what the numbers are, but I have heard sort of disturbing disturbing numbers, which are probably hearsay, but, but um, numbers of people being assaulted, um, sexually assaulted in the military. And I don't want to say wo just women, because I know that this can happen to men yes. as well, and certainly it it's, um, would not surprise me to hear that it happens to people within the uh, LGBT community, um, although we probably don't know those numbers because we, they're not able to come out. But, um, but I know I've heard d disturbing numbers about how frequently women are sexually assaulted in the military and um, really horrible numbers which and I, I don't want to I don't want to sort of um, uh, disseminate bad information because um, certainly the military is a good option for a lot of people and I, I wouldn't want to discourage anybody from from joining the military but I have heard that um, you know that there were quite a large number of women um, and and I suspect men as well yes there, that, there are and it is it's an issue in society. The military as a portion of our society reflects what's going on. Uh -huh. It's a part of society where life is lived very intensely and so yes. certain problems are experienced intensely. I don't know what the current data is as far as exact numbers, but what I have heard for a while and what I experienced um, it was actually, I can, I can let you know, I was hired first at the Hartford Vet Center as the military sexual trauma therapist. That's one of my specialties in addition to family okay. therapy. And that's a service that I continue to provide now at the Springfield Vet Center. And the numbers, um, the VA has a policy that if a veteran goes for primary care services, so every time they go to their primary care doctor, they are supposed to be asked if they ever had uh, experience of military sexual trauma defined as harassment or assault during their military service. The screen will prop, prop up, a, pop up, a prompt will prompt up for the provider. And the veteran is to be asked this every time until they say no, because sometimes a person needs to have the question asked 10 sure. times, 20 times, 40 times before they have the sense of safety to say, yes, this did happen to me. Mm -hmm. According to the data that I understand exists, um, the number of women who have said yes is about equal to the number of men who have said yes. Wow. Now that means that there, while there is a significant number of women uh, and, and percentage within the female uh, service member population, the, the percentage is much, much less for the men. Right. right. By sheer population number. Correct. However, still a large number. That, that is still a large number. So if anybody is, is listening and this was that, their experience, one, they should know that that should never have happened to them, that nobody deserves that, and that there is help for them, and that actually uh, veterans with, who report history of military sexual trauma are to be provided care within the VA, both on Vet Center and the Medical Center side of the house, free of charge, and that would include uh, medicines and any other kind of treatment. If, the, if their doctor says, 